Good afternoon and happy Friday, and welcome to the COVID-19 Learning Community, hosted by the COVID-19 Command Center and powered by the Joint Information Center. Some housekeeping. By default, all participants will be muted to minimize distractions. For Q&A, please use the raise hand function at the bottom of your screen. When called on, please unmute your microphone to ask your question and re-mute your microphone when not speaking to minimize background noise. When speaking, please announce yourself and speak slowly. You can also enter your questions or comments into the chat panel. And please hold all questions and comments until after the presentation portion of the event. Today's meeting objective is to review the current state of the San Francisco COVID-19 epidemic and local indicators of hospital capacity, disease situation, and disease control and current testing efforts. Also to gather community insights into our outreach for the city test SF site at the Alamany market, and also to highlight community tests and respond bright spots. Here's today's agenda, and I'll pass it over to Jackie McCright, Deputy Director of the Community Branch, the COVID Central Command. Jackie, please take it away. Welcome everybody, good afternoon. I am covering Jeffrey is off on a much needed holiday for a few days. So I'll be facilitating today. So I'd like to welcome all of you. We have an exciting afternoon session. We're gonna start with the COVID status update and testing calendar from Dr. Jonathan Fuchs. And then next we're gonna have prepare for our new city test site at the Alamany Market by Toby Scottness. And then we're gonna have um, Nubia Mendoza from the Joint Information Center. And one of my favorite parts of this meeting is the bright spot, community bright spot. Patricia Barraza is gonna be presenting today. And that will be about something good that's happening during COVID. Next, we're gonna have um, Toby Scottness, and she's gonna talk about the new testing site at the Alamany Market. Toby? Perfect. Um, hi, everyone. Are you able to see my screen? Perfect. Um, I'm getting a thumbs up. So um, hi, everyone. I'm Toby. Um, I am a co-director on the testing team, and um, I'm happy to bring you all an update on the City Test Alamany Farmers Market. So beginning on Tuesday, November 17th, uh, we will be reallocating our City Test SF resources to Alamany Farmers Market to really serve the San Francisco southeastern sector. Um, our response to COVID is data-driven um, by the data that we get from our multiple community sites and our multiple sites throughout the city, really using the data science and facts to help us um, understand how we can best serve and um, uh, respond to COVID-19. The data has driven our decision to reallocate our, our SOMA high-capacity testing resources to the southeastern sector, where we are seeing higher infection rates in San Francisco. Um, and just a little bit of background, you know, since August, we have, as you all know, because we've all worked um, together in um, mul multiple times and over the course of our response to move testing to neighborhoods most impacted through uh, by the virus. Um, we've had community pop-ups in Excelsior, Mission, OMI, Bayview, Tenderloin, Western Edition, Sunnydale, Outer Mission, Portrero Hill, and Hunter's View. So really widening our response and making sure it's accessible to everyone. Um, now, in addition to our community pop-ups, we will have this five-day-a-week high-capacity testing site. It will have walk-in and drive-through testing. And so um, I personally am a very visual person, so I thought it would be helpful to give everyone um, a little bit of an overview of the site. So um, as I mentioned, the site will be able to test 500 people. We will have both walk-up, which will get tested here, and we will have drive-up. Um, and uh, there will be on-site registration for anyone who wants to um, register on-site or, or may not have an appointment. So we will be able to accommodate drop-ins um, at this site. Um, the Alamany Farmers Market is great because there are these great bays that we can use for cover. Um, we are approaching winter months and um, daylight savings is this weekend. So anticipating it getting darker, earlier and potentially rain and other weather events coming. Um, really looking at looking forward to having these bays and this protection for people who are walking up to get tested, for staff and even people who, 
you know, may drive up, park, and then come over and walk and get tested. Um, so here's a little bit of a, an overview of um, what I uh, just mentioned, an overview of the operations for the site. The site will run Monday through Friday. It will be Monday afternoons from 12.30 to 4.30, Friday mornings from 8.30 to 12.30, and Tuesday th through Thursday from 8.30 to 4.30. Um, we will have both drive up and walk up options uh, for the community and uh, registration will be available online and on site. Uh, we are working on identifying language capacity to support on site registration and really looking at language capacity for Spanish, Cantonese and Filipino. Um, at this time, there is no CBO partnership for the site. Um, it is a city test site. And um, with that, um, I'm happy to take questions on this. Okay, I'm not seeing any questions, uh, but like Jonathan, I will be on the call. So I'm happy to take questions later, um, or if you uh, write one in the chat, I'm happy to circle back. Uh, this is Lonnie. Can I say something? Um, just about, uh, you know, this is a permanent site. We're really excited. Um, and we hope that folks know that this is um, in addition to all of the community pop up sites that Jeffria has been working so diligently on finding. And that I know Maria, Isela, and um, Deanna have been um, working in D10, I'm sorry, D9 and D11 in the Excelsior to find pop-up sites. So this is in no way, shape or form a replacement to that. It's the city's addition to it, um, to have a permanent space um, in the Southeast. So um, we're, we're excited and we're hopeful that uh, folks will refer to um, to the space to, for to get tested um, when when there is no community pop up to refer them to, and um, thank you. Thank you, Lonnie. Yeah, absolutely. Thank you, Lonnie. Oh, sorry, Jackie. Oh no, I was just saying thank you. Toby, are you anything else? Yes, that's all I have. Okay. Thank you so much. And yeah, I know Jalfrida has been um, very excited about establishing this. We've, we've wanted a drive through in the Southeast part of the city for some time now. So it, it'll be nice, particularly since the winter is coming um, for people that do want to drive through and not get out of their cars. So I hope that everyone does refer um, to the site. And next we have Nubia Mendoza from the Joint Information Center, who's going to talk about. Hello, everyone. <laughs> thank you, Jackie, and thank you, Toby, for a great presentation. I'm just going to share my screen now to showcase the PowerPoint. All right, perfect. And now, if I can just get it to, it's not coming up for me. Oh, there we go. Right here. All right. How's everyone doing? I hope everyone's doing great on this Friday before our Halloween full moon. And I know everyone's gonna party virtually, right? Yes, great. Encourage your community to do the same <laughs> so that we can reopen faster. So good afternoon, everyone. My name is Nubia Mendoza and I'm, and I'm the Deputy Director for COVID Response and the Deputy Director for Information Dissemination and also the Latinx Campaign Manager. So I've worked with Patricia and your team along with Valerie from the Latino Task Force, and uh, thank you so much for your support. So the Get Tested is San Francisco's multi-pronged, multilingual, and multi-channel COVID-19 testing citywide campaign. The campaign has appeared on TV, radio, streaming, bus shelters, digital banners, and social media with more than 17 million impressions. And 10 targeted zip codes, mostly in the Southeast San Francisco and Chinatown. Postcards were also sent to more than 150,000 addresses in those zip codes. 
Finally, our neighborhood canvassing team regularly deliver flyers, posters, and neighborhoods throughout San Francisco. As you have seen them, they most likely have, uh, you've seen them in their uh, vests. So um, they carry a little city seal. And what you'll see in the slide is the official, um, and is this the, oh, sorry. This is the official and standard brand for the city and county of San Francisco, which is recognizable for its simple blue, yellow, and white layout. And so for the Alamanning testing site, we have the following objective and goals. Our objective for this campaign is to ensure equitable access to COVID-19 testing for San Francisco residents and workers. Our main goals are to drive awareness about the availability of testing, improve clarity around when and why testing is important, and increase testing among those proportionately impacted by COVID-19. The image on the left-hand side, uh, you'll see the black with the kente cloth border is a community branded version of the Get Tested door hanger. This, is specific this specific community brand was developed in partnership with the African-American Arts and Cultural District and community leaders in San Francisco's African-American community. Next slide. Our strategy is to develop and execute multi-pronged, multilingual, multi-channel campaign with clear, consistent, and culturally competent messaging with regular frequency. Target outreach to communities and workers disproportionately impacted by COVID-19 and engage community partners, media, and influencers. The image you see to the left is the Latinx community brand developed in partnership with the Latino Task Force. Specifically, this is part of a poster developed in support of the community testing site at the Mission Hub. In addition to the hub, Mission Hub testing flyer, we recently partnered with Excelsior Strong to create Halloween and Dia de los Muertos that Patricia will you know, share with you later, testing flyers that are culturally appropriate. So we are hand in hand with our community to ensure that the, we, we meet their needs. Digital and traditional media outreach tactics include, but are not limited to, general neighborhood and language media outreach and social media campaigns and engagement with trusted community leaders, influencers, and organizations. The most effective outreach is community-led. It must begin with the community. The JIC has gra graphic designers, web developers, writers, translators, media strategists, and outreach teams to support the community's efforts and needs. Outreach, so to do our canvassing, to support our outreach efforts in the communities. We can develop posters, flyers, toe hangers, and other materials. We can also deploy our outreach teams to canvas neighborhoods and merchant coordinators, which as of actually today, recently, I've um, partnered with Tiffany Tatum in which we will proceed forward and do some outreach in Japan towns for their pop-up sites. Speaking of partnerships, the image above comes from a poster for a pop-up testing site. And, Fort Smith Square in Chinatown. We partnered with Chinese Hospital on this effort. In this case, and with the community input, the look and feel of the city's official brand was preferred. And um, well, so far it looks like this last slide unfortunately did not show, but um, give me one second. Here we go, thank you for your patience. And so last but not least, we our desired outcomes are always about increasing testing for people disproportionately impacted by COVID-19, the public understanding of testing and its importance, import, and partnering with the community to support equitable, accessible, and culturally competent outreach. The Joint Information Center produces multilingual post-testing resource booklets to answer the most common questions people have after testing. The booklet also provides resources and from resources to services. So these booklets, we order them for our community testing sites, for our city, our city, our city testing sites. And so we wanna make sure that if you are um, a, a, you know, a community that is holding a community pop-up site or need these booklets, please feel free to let the JIC know. And with that, um, I also want to share that these booklets are available in English, Spanish, Chinese, and Filipino. And soon translations will also be available in Russian, Vietnamese, Arabic, Loatian, Thai, and Cambodian. And some of these resources are really important because they do, uh, they do offer mental health resources, especially in this pandemic that has caused a lot of stress on a lot of families and sometimes this, uh, unemployment. So this booklet really offers a variety of information that if you're not impacted by the actual coronavirus in, in the sense of you know being sick, it's impacting you in another way. These are resources that you can use.
thank you and I'm happy to answer any questions. Nubia, can you put your information in the chat about where they can, how they can get the booklet? Absolutely. Great question. I will put my text again. One second, I'm going to stop sharing. Oh, yeah, I'm going to stop sharing here. Great. And, go and here. while you're doing that, this is Jonathan, mm -hmm. just uh, Nubia and Toby, thank you. And I think thinking about the kind of the presentation as a whole, one of the thing, one of the goals is we wanted to share with you the information about Alamany as a test site. And to also understand, you know, to get to, to get some feedback from our learning community here about ways to try to promote the site, um, any things that things that we should be considering, um, uh, ideas that you have, concerns that you have, other things that we, we just want to make sure that the you know we really want people to take advantage of the site, and we're going to hear from Patricia soon uh, about the you know the success of having a combination drive-through walk-up site um, with Excelsior Strong. So. What works? How should we make sure to get the word out, complementing what the JIC can provide? Do you have ideas for the JIC about other materials or resources that could be helpful? So we wanted to have this space to hear from you about what your thoughts are about having this new um, important resource in the southeast part of the city that will be able to conduct testing five days a week. So any ideas or comments that people have, that would be great. Jonathan, I'm sorry, what was the, like, how to do outreach for the site? Was that the question? Yeah, the question is like, what are your ideas about outreach? About like, how do we get the word out? Um, you think about Alamany and think would work well about that because it's a little bit different than, you know, it's obviously, it has its own unique place and it will complement the community pop-ups. So just curious, how should outreach look like? What, what are your ideas? We want to hear from you. So um, I'm aware that we are going to, so our protocol here in the JIC, when we have a city testing site, we canvas um, the neighborhoods and make sure that we give them, what we've done with the mission testing hub site along with the Excelsior is that we produce these get tested door hangers. And on the door hangers, we, po we place labels. And so that's how we've been able to support the Excelsior Strong and that they wanna do sp specific targeted um, canvassing. We use labels specific to the pop-up site information. Now, we have a lot of tools to support the Alamany testing site to ensure that the neighborhood is aware. Uh, we also have access to providing, you know, alert, uh, alert SF messages. So those messages are received through text or a phone call, and you can sign up at 888-777 and just plug in your, your zip code. And how we use that is we use a system where we push out testing information to a specific targeted zip code, and then they'll be aware that this uh, mission testing site will be live and ready to go. So will you be canvassing the Bernal? So next to Alamany is like Bernal Heights. You're gonna do Excel Outer Mission, Bayview, all the surrounding areas, Sunnydale, Correct. okay. Correct, and we'll work closely with the Alamany uh, testing coordinators and of course with Lonnie and Toby to make sure that we are working in coordination um, because you know we've learned from our past mistakes. We wanna make sure that the information that is needed and who is targeted for this, um, that they understand that this is a new opportunity for a new testing site. So we will use what we can in our tools and our you know tool shed to make sure that people get the word out. And it could be a flyer as well. We do flyering uh, and posters to make sure that the information is readily available. Thank you, Nubia. I wanna just add to that. I know um, Jeffrey has been doing a lot of work through our different DNAPs um, in, the, in each district and um, using that forum as a way to talk about some of these things. And I know that uh, this will be a topic, a, an, up, an upcoming topic, just to figure out, just to figure out how do we get the word out in a way that is um, mutually supportive, also to the pop-up sites. So um, right now isn't the only time to provide feedback, but we do know. I just want to state that we are looking for it. There are other venues, and our goal is to again be in addition to everything we're already doing 
um, and continuing to get better at doing pop-ups and continuing to get into the areas and find the solutions we need to find to get access to certain spaces. Um, I think anybody that's been working with Jeffria and Toby will know that there, it's, there's no shortage of blood, sweat, and tears to get into some of these sites. Um, and I guess my biggest concern is just knowing that we're not taking away from that. We are still, we are still trying to get to some level of, I want to say perfection, but maybe I'll just say some, some level of better, um, and then just keep improving. Um, but in the meantime, we have this permanent site and it's a, it's a comfort to know that that's there as well. And, you know, Lana, to your point about the pop-up sites, we, um, we hold, you know, weekly press uh, roundtables. And so we have often spoken about the pop sites in the city. Um, and so in, in addition to not just the press media that we hold, you know, we target multicultural press, right? We also have done in the past uh, targeted social media posts to key neighborhoods. So it's really leveraging each other, right? Where it's really making sure that the tools that we have not only benefit the city testing sites, but also our wonderful community uh, pop-up sites. So we're here to your disposal. Be careful what you ask for, Nubia. <laughs> you know, I'm leaving for, I have time off next week, so you guys can ask all you want, and then I will make sure that it all happens. <laughs> I'll just be pressing forward and make sure this is the deadlines. <laughs> deadlines are important, so, you know, tell me when you need them. <laughs> thank you. No, thank you. Just to add to that, I just I would say it's important. The community pop-ups are a critical part of the strategy, and this particular this audience, you're all also moving. Um, we're excited to bring on Alamania as another resource, but I just also want to reinforce, and I have on other calls, we have our alternate sites as well, and they do a significant amount of testing. We have been very successful in identifying people who are positive and then helping them link to isolation support. So, um, we pose a full complement of sites. And then we, we also can't forget private providers. They're doing a lot of testing as well. So we're doing a lot of outreach with private providers to encourage them to do testing as well. So it's really a complement of a wide range of resources, just trying to make them as low barrier as possible so people can get to the testing that they need and get the support that they need in order to safely isolate if they're positive. Well said. So thank you everyone for your time. Thank you, Nubia. Any other questions for Nubia? Enjoy your vacation, Nubia. Thanks. <laughs> My phones are gonna be off, so I won't be able to respond. I apologize, but I will when I get back. <laughs> Yay. And next we have the community bright spot. There is something really good happening in the Excelsior and it's called Excelsior Strong. And we have Patricia Barraza to help us um, find out about it. Thank you for joining us today. Thank you. I appreciate all of you giving us the space um, to have this conversation and let you guys know what we're doing. Um, I do wanna let you know that I do live in Excelsior so you will be hearing some motorcycles in the background. Um, because that's like the bane of my existence on Zoom. Uh, but just to just to let you guys know that that happens often. Um, okay, so Jay, uh, there we go. Thank you. Uh, so Jack is helping me share the screen. Um, so this is kind of the extension of the Latino Task Force. Um, I was privileged to be, uh, you know, made in the mission. My parents uh, immigrated here. Um, in the 60s and the 70s, they met on BART and, um, you know, we, that's kind of where I was um, uh, born and we moved to the Excelsior when I was a year old. So I have been raised in this community, um, gone to all the schools and now am in this collective with neighbors, um, local nonprofits. Next slide. Um, and so we're a huge collective. Um, we started this mostly because we were getting calls and 
from people that we're already working with that had gotten COVID and that needed help um, staying home and with food and trying to navigate the system of DPH. So, and a lot of them were monolingual Spanish speakers. So we just kind of jumped in and supported in any way that we could. And then um, when the Latino task force, um, we were all kind of a part of that. So we saw that there was a huge need in the Excelsior and we all kind of came together. I am the beacon director here at the middle school um, in District 11, uh, James Denman Middle School through Urban Services YMCA. And we've got a ton of people and organizations here from Jamestown, Instituto, Coleman Advocates, Excelsior Works, uh, Mission Neighborhood Centers, um, and we're still collecting more. So the more uh, you know, folks that become COVID positive, they kind of pull in the person that they trust the most. And that's kind of how this grew. Next slide. Um, we are here to serve the people. So a little bit about ourselves. Um, we are, our goal is to serve our community. Um, to get them healthy, um, to ground ourselves in the Latino community here, um, and to have equitable partnerships with city agencies, which has worked out really well. Um, you know, my I am really proud to say that everyone from DPH um, that has been deployed to be supportive in this effort has been amazing. Um, Isela, Oscar, Aaron, um, Maria, like everyone has really showed up and been a part of all of our efforts and seen us as kind of like their go-tos. And so it's worked out really, really great. Next slide. Uh, this is kind of how it started. So Marco, Laura, Oscar, and myself. Oscar and I were raised in the Excelsior. Um, so we kind of like bring that understanding of this neighborhood. Um, Laura and Marco both work for very long and respected organizations here in the Excelsior. Um, and so as their, um, as their folks were coming to them and saying that they were positive and them trying to help them individually, um, we kind of each helped each other. And our jobs have all supported us in pivoting our resources and our daily tasks. We all still have our regular nine to fives um, and we've kind of added this to that. Um, next slide. And so here's some pictures. We've, uh, you know, everyone, Lonnie, Isela, um, Dr. Fuchs, everybody has come to visit us. Um, I'm usually telling people to go away unless they're being tested. Um, and I appreciate that everyone kind of stops and says hi, uh, takes their photo up and then bounces. Um, I am pretty much in that space where I feel like COVID is, um, you know, kind of focusing on our families that kind of live on top of each other and are having a really hard time with housing. Um, and so it is important for us to have a very like targeted support system with folks that they see every single week. Um, and so that's worked out really well. We've gotten also a lot of support from our neighbors and our organizations and neighborhood watch folks uh, to pay for lunch, coffee, um, I'm a big coffee fan, so uh, like if you ever want to say hi to me at a uh, Monday, please bring me coffee. Um, and so, you know, Little Joe's, everybody has been really supportive. Um, next slide. So I just kind of did an average. Uh, Dr. Fuchs kind of showed the overall. Um, I did an average of like the highest tests we've ever taken was 424 that happened last week during our Halloween event. The lowest was 175. Um, children that we've tested, we've done some targeted like outreach to families. We did see that some of the private schools are opening. So we let folks know that um, at Stafford at Reardon um, that are in this neighborhood to come and test their students. And when the hubs opened, we're trying to let those CBOs know that they can come and get tested. Um, we also did a backpack giveaway and then we did the um, Halloween space so that children feel a little less anxiety over getting tested because um, that has been seen as something that's pretty hard for them. Um, as far as like some of the data, like the highest positives we've had at one time is 12. Um, the lowest is zero. 
We did our first pop-up last week um, and just some intentionality around the pop-up. Uh, we have a low-income housing development going up at Valente, which is a space that you know we all grew up going to visit um, as people passed away. It's a funeral home and it's not quite low income yet. We're still fighting to make sure that every single unit is um, is available to folks that that you know have part part time gigs or work um, you know minimum wage. But it is a beautiful space, and um, the District Eleven office, as well as um, Bridge Housing, has worked with us really well to put put up the pop up. We were able to serve 168 people. The majority of them were just walking by. We did a lot of outreach, but as we were talking to people, they were like, you know, they were going to Safeway or they were getting stuff and they had never been tested before. Um, we tested a handful of homeless folks. Um, nobody was positive, which was awesome. So we feel like that was great. And we're hoping to do one every month so that we have some uh, a footprint in a place that's kind of really busy. Mission Street is a super busy space for us. Um, so we're hoping to do that. Next slide. All right, so at the core of our work is cultural humility. Um, every single person that works at our space is um, bilingual um, so that anybody that comes up to them, they'll be able to feel welcomed and um, understood. Um, as a network, we definitely focus on, um, you know, following the families that test positive. So trying to support them as best we can as, as well as the families that just tell us they're positive, even if they don't come from the particular site, but from our neighborhood. Um, and then, you know, the community wellness team, which the Latino task force has um, created and supported us in implementing, um, we're all kind of doing it. And we finally, you know, have funding. We're working with BACR to put together that team, but that really speaks to the um, support that we can give families and the trust that they have in us to help them even with being able to get into an INQ or being able to access the services, even if they don't have insurance or medical insurance to be able to trust the city has been something really hard for families. So knowing that they trust everybody at the site and they know us um, has been a really great way to really get to know families and to support them. Next slide. So we just had a Halloween event, um, the Latino uh, Mission Hub. Uh, food distribution center was able to give us a bunch of pumpkins. We had lots of kids come by. We all dressed up. So even though it was a, you know, very small get together, um, children were able to take a pumpkin, get tested, get some candy and celebrate Halloween a little bit. Um, we did start flu shots the week before last. The first week we had over 50 flu shots given. This week we had to go back and get even more. We had 71 flu shots and so many families were so appreciative that they were able to get a flu shot at the same time. So thank you all so much um, for pushing that through and helping us get that done. Next slide. Um, so this is just part of what the, the wellness teams have been doing, um, you know, food support, distribution of PPE and cleaning supplies. The advocacy part with the DPH social workers has been really great. Um, they've been really receptive to having us, you know, be on calls with them and supporting families. One-to-one um, -one family support, you know, Valerie always says, like, someone's going to call you in the middle of the night for lemons. And, you know, sometimes that does happen. You know, families are... You know, they don't know what to ask for. And once they ask you for something, you know, something as little as like my kids like Fruit Loops, would you be able to get us some? It turns into, well, now I have a high fever and I don't have um, Tylenol, you know, even though that might not have been the first thing that they trust somebody to get for them. So um, a lot of that, you know, we have a lot of services for mental health support. So doing referrals for that and then accessing and navigating the right to recover and rental assistance has also been something that we all come together to support our families with. Next slide. Um, so this is our food distribution support. Um, what I've been saying consistently is that our uh, COVID testing site is a doorway 
to support families and to get to know families so that if and when they do become positive, they know who to go to and how to get real support. So we started off as um, food distribution. Right now we are serving over 700 families with the support of the Mission Food Hub. Um, most of mine are deliveries. So if anybody ever wants to volunteer, please hit me up. Uh, and they're all over the city because uh, SFUSD has their lottery system and you know, not everybody lives in this neighborhood, but um, we are able to deliver to over 112 families. And that's all the data for all our families, which you know, we're really happy that we get to support, um, at least with food, with our families that you know, have lost their jobs or have had a lot of issues with like sharing kitchens with other families. Um, so that's our food stuff. Next slide. Uh, so what's next? Um, so we are gonna open an Excelsior COVID response hub in with support of BACR. So we're moving forward with hiring um, and it's actually gonna be next door to Valente, which was a really old flower shop for GOSIs that was there for many years. So we're working on that. Um, and then, you know, really respect all of the work that the city agencies have done and been able to bring us in as decision makers um, because we do represent the community. We did grow up in this neighborhood. We do understand what the needs are. Um, and then just being accessible and available to resources. Um, we really appreciate what everybody from Park and Rec, the city departments, that has really come out to support us in everything that we've asked for. Um, and then we hope to have a pop-up every month for um, testing. We're working on the November one right now. Um, next slide. And you know, our saying is always no decision about us without us. Um, we, you know, really pride ourselves at being in in the spaces where decisions are being made for us, for our people, for our neighbors. Um, we all live in this neighborhood. We all thrive in this neighborhood. And we hope that as a city, we, um, we really look to the experts who are on the ground doing all the work. So that's kind of our saying. Uh, and last slide is our celebration on Monday. Um, so we will have danza at 9.30. Uh, folks that get tested are gonna get pan dulce, um, and we are gonna be painting a mural um, in celebration of Dia de los Muertos for the Excelsior. So I think that's it. Thank you guys for letting me uh, talk and support all the great work that everybody is doing. And if you do have any families in our neighborhood that you are supporting, please let us know we are you know, for some reason, um, we have been able to build capacity. Um, nobody has ever been turned away for any resource. Um, so we, you know, we're happy to support any neighbor that you might have in this district. Thank you so much, Patricia. That was just like I thought it was going to be. I learned so much and we really, really appreciate the work that you're doing uh, to help us in the health department. We know that we can't do it all and we don't have all the staff to do it in a culturally appropriate way. And so we, we definitely, and I will get the word back to Asela and Oscar and Maria that um, you did a shout out for them. So thank you so much for that. Um, any questions for her? Lots of shout outs about how wonderful, how awesome of a job you're doing. Um, please give that information to the rest of the Excelsior Strong partners that you have as well. I know that uh, just, just they're not question. all on this. Is today. this about the, is this from, is that part of the Latino task force or is this a separate group? We're the cousins of the Latino task force. <laughs> Definitely everything we do is in collaboration with them. Thank you. Any other questions? I just, I just saw something Jonathan posed, posed regarding how, uh, can you comment on the success of the preference for drive-through versus walk-up? 
Uh, for us, you know, we we pretty much get a, a really big um, drive up and even walk up. I mean, it's pretty half and half. Um, we're busy the entire day. Between four and six is probably our busiest time, um, which is the time. And unfortunately, now that it's getting dark, we're going to have to work a little harder to make sure that we have lighting um, at the park because our families are working. I mean, our working families are the ones that are being the most affected by this, and they are the ones that are coming to get tested um, after work between four and six. So um, the hybrid model has worked really, really well. At the pop-up, we only had a handful of um, drive-ups. The majority was, because we were on Mission Street, was walk-up. If I can, just one another follow-up question. Um, just with the, the testing that you did and experimented on Valente, you know, at Valente's on, on Mission Street, um, and you had pretty good time. I was curious, any reactions that people had specifically about all being able to offer Saturday testing or how, just thinking about where people are trying to get tested, just what, what the experience was there? I'd love to hear more about that. Oh, I have lots to say about that. Um, I've had a lot of people say that they uh, feel very, uh, just that people are just not nice at the city testing sites. Um, and they've like lost their appointments or they get there and people are on lunch and they leave um, or they're just rude. Um, and so the community testing sites, especially on Saturday, a lot of them were just literally walking around and they were like, oh, I, I was gonna make an appointment um, at Embarcadero, but now that you're here, I don't have to wait till Monday. I can do it Saturday and I have to do it once a week because I work at the hospital at Laguna Honda. We have a lot of nurses that live in this part of town, um, a lot of families that work in the hospitals. And so I'm not sure what the disconnect is between like our hospitals, like doing their own testing for their workers or not, but it looks like at least here, a lot of them were really appreciative of having at least one, you know, a pop-up that they didn't even know was happening and they were able to walk down the street. Some of them were like only going to Safeway to go do their weekly grocery shopping and stopped um, and stopped to get tested. Thank you for that feedback, Patricia. I appreciate it. We'll definitely talk about that internally and see, you know, make sure we discuss it. Come up with a plan. Uh, Dr. Fuchs, this is Jessica. Um, thanks again for providing the data. Um, we were wondering if um, this data would be, uh, you, you would be able to present like the demographic data on who was tested. Um, Great, you know, thanks for the question. Yeah, I'm sorry, please continue, I apologize. What, what else were you gonna say? Oh, I, I just meant like it didn't have to be today. I'm just, we're just wondering if it will be presented yeah, so we'll we have so and I've shared this in the with some of our with our pop up efforts in general, we have we don't get complete data on the demographics of people who test we have. Um, we, we're, we're actually missing quite a bit of data on race, ethnicity, as well as zip code data, but we can look over time uh, over multiple sessions, we can start to see trends and like who is accessing the site. So um, we'll take a look at that and then we'll be in touch with, with your team directly to be able to provide that information. Does that sound okay? That sounds great, thank you. Any other questions? Jonathan, you have one more thing you wanted to share. Oh, a couple things. Yeah. Um, one, I do, um, if it's okay, I'm going to, I know, well, actually, I don't know if Lillian is on the call. I know I saw her before, but from the, um, from the Glide team, although I think I, uh, is some, a member from the Glide team here? Cause they also um, wanted to just give them a shout out. Oh, Teresa, you're there. Fantastic. Hi. Do you want to say a word about your, um, just another community um, bright spot and just uh, share briefly before we close about your ex the experiences this past week? Sure, we had um, our family COVID testing launch um, here at the Glide parking lot. And um, we did a lot of outreach, um, especially to the Latinx community here in the Tenderloin and um, we did a Halloween theme for our launch. Um, and we had 
144 people test on Wednesday, um, which we felt was a really good turnout. And I know Ken and Lillian had mentioned to bring some pictures along. I don't know if there's time for that, but I did bring some pictures or I'm sure we could just email those. That's great. Thank you so much. Um, I did one other thing I wanted to share before um, we close. Just um, I think uh, as we talked about, you know, given that the cases are moving, um, my screen is doing bizarre things right now. So sorry. Um, let me stop this for a second. Um, the, uh, we are, you know, because of the increase in cases that we are seeing, a number of the um, openings that were planned for early next week, starting on November 3rd, have been delayed. Um, and that press release just came out this morning from um, the mayor's office and from um, Dr. Colfax. Uh, I'm going to try to pull that up if I can. But uh, Lonnie, while I look for that, if you, is there something else you wanted to comment on that? I just want to make sure. You, we had a chance to just to highlight that. Yeah, I'm trying to pull it up too. Um, I only had a hard copy. Hey, oh, wait, here it is. I'll it's, put in the link right now. Hey, Lonnie, it's Deirdre. I could just give a quick overview if you want me to. Oh, sure. Oh, great. Right. Glad to Thank you. Um, hi, I'm Deirdre Hussey. I'm acting director of comms with um, um, DPH. Yes, this morning, um, the mayor and Dr. Colfax announced um, that we will pause on... Um, the movement we had for November 3rd, Tuesday. Um, on Tuesday, we were gonna expand some um, indoor capacities. Specifically, restaurants were gonna go indoors from 25% capacity to 50% um, capacity. Um, and they were also going to increase um, capacity at churches. Um, that was, um, that's being held because um, in the last two weeks, we have seen um, an increase in cases and an increase in hospitalizations. Oh, while um, while the increases are um, while the increases um, are giving us a cause for concern, it's not alarming. Um, we've done a lot of reopening in the last um, since September first, since the state took us off the state watch list and allowed us to start reopening. We have done a lot of um, big reopenings, um, and so the uptick in cases and um, in hospitalizations was expected, and we are prepared. However, um, given the national and statewide trends, where we're seeing um, increasing cases, and as we enter the holiday season, we thought it would be prudent and um, the best strategy um, to just pause for the next couple of weeks and see, evaluate the data and see where we are at that point. Um, we are not taking any step backwards and um, schools will remain on track um, to reopen. And right now 74 schools have been approved um, for reopening and we will see a handful of high schools open next week. I'm happy to take any questions on, on that announcement today. Thanks for sharing that, Deirdre. I really appreciate it. Um, um, and I know we're at the end of the hour. The lesson I wanted to share is for next week. So people have uh, this on their calendars. We're going to be hearing a presentation from Bridge HIV about the um, COVID vaccine trials and kind of what they're all about and what vaccines are being tested. And so we look forward to that presentation for next week. And of course, for closing remarks, uh, Jackie, your, your, your thoughts. Thank you so much for everybody joining us today um, and all of the speakers um, excited about the Alamany project um, testing site opening for drive through and walk up in the bright spot. Keep up the good work. Excelsior strong and Toby, all your work that you're doing um, to bring testing and Nubia. You guys are working very hard to have a community voice in all the materials that you're developing. And uh, we appreciate that. And Jonathan for taking all the questions from everybody and you seem to, you know, to be hearing people. And if there's anything else that, you know, people want as far as data, please speak up about it. And we're, Jonathan will try to work with advanced planning to get it to you for these meetings. It's really gonna be important for us to learn as much as we can about the 
COVID vaccine. So get the word out to try to get other colleagues to come and be on this call next week. Because, you know, we're anticipating that we're going to get the vaccine sometime next year. And it's going to be trusted people like us in the various communities to get the word out for people to take advantage of it. So let's find out as much as we can about it. And next Friday, we'll do that. Have a great weekend and a safe Halloween. And hopefully see you next Friday. Great. Happy birthday, Jackie. I get to say that. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> Halloween is my favorite holiday. This is my first time not dressing up and going to Vegas to celebrate. So I, um, I will just deal with it. <laughs> <laughs> Bye, everybody. Bye. Bye. And thank you guys for joining the COVID-19 learning community. If you have any questions or needs, please contact equity-neighborhoods at sfgov.org. Have a great Friday and have a great Halloween.